South Korea is the 12th largest economy in the world, larger than Australia, Spain, and Saudi Arabia. Around 15% of GDP comes from only one company called Samsung. This company single-handedly made South Korea one of the most powerful countries in Asia. Samsung is the largest company in South Korea with an annual revenue of $240 billion. It is the ninth largest company in the world by profit with a $34 billion profit. The company has 287,000 employees and was founded by Lee Byung-chul. Building such a huge company was not easy for Lee Byung-chul. It's not the United States where you get an ecosystem to build large corporations. It was South Korea in the 1940s, when poverty, corruption, and political instability were hovering around. No one can imagine what Lee Byung-chul has done and a country like South Korea will have electronics giant Samsung. We know Samsung due to its electronics and mobile phone. Do you know the world's tallest building was built by Samsung? I'm not talking about financing the project. Obviously, the project was funded by Dubai government and AMAR. I am talking about its construction. Samsung has its division called Samsung C&T Corporation, which is a construction and engineering company. The construction company is so advanced and possesses such expertise, it built Burj Khalifa, which was not easy to build. Want to know how Lee Byung-chul built South Korea and Samsung? Watch the full video. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Lee Byung-chul was born on February 12, 1910 in Iryong County, South Gyeongsang Province in South Korea. Lee's father, Chan Woo, was a landowner in his hometown and belonged to the prominent Yangban family. Lee therefore was fortunate to have a decent upbringing. At age 5, he went to Munsangjung Private School where he was taught Chinese classics. He moved to Jisoo Middle School when he was 10, then Su Song Middle School at age 11. After completing his elementary education in 1922, he proceeded to Jungdong Middle School to study modern sciences and graduated in 1929, aged 19 years. For his higher education, Lee went to Waseda University in Japan. However, he never completed his education, leaving in 1931. After leaving school, Lee went back home to work in the family business. In 1936, at age 26, Lee started a rice mill in Kyungnam with two other family friends. Each contributed 10,000 won. The venture had a rocky start, but thanks to Lee's ability to diagnose the problem and make corrections, it recovered its early losses. Lee then went into trucking, buying Masan Ilchul Automobile Company. He also made some real estate investments in his 20s, at one point owning 6.6 .6 million square meters of land. However, in 1937, following the outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War, land values fell and Lee, who had used loans to expand his business, had to sell his assets to pay the banks. In 1938, Lee left his hometown and went to Daegu City. With 30,000 won he had inherited after his father died, Lee opened a trading business there. He called it Samsung Trading Company. Samsung was Korean for three stars. Lee focused the trading company primarily on selling and trucking goods produced around the city. These included dried Korean fish and vegetables. He then expanded it to importing and exporting goods and later started manufacturing noodles. He even bought Chosun Brewery in 1939. By 1945, age 35 years, Lee was transporting goods all over Korea. In 1947, he moved the company's base to Seoul. Three years later, in 1950, Samsung Trading Company was one of the top 10 trading companies in the country. In 1950, the Korean War broke out, pitting the communists in North Korea with the capitalists in the South. Seoul soon fell into the hands of North Korea. This greatly impacted Lee's trading business and he had to move to another location. He chose Busan. Busan was experiencing a surge in activity following an influx of American soldiers. These troops relied on local businesses for food and equipment. Lee positioned Samsung to serve them and this is how he was able to keep his business going throughout the war. The Korean War ended in 1953 with Ri Sing Man taking control of South Korea. The new leader wanted to restore South Korea to stability after three years of war. Recognizing that a wind of change was blowing, Lee began diversifying Samsung. In 1953, Lee established Chiel Sugar, a subsidiary of Samsung. 
Chio means first in Korean. The company flourished and sold its products across the country, leveraging Lee's established trading and trucking network. Before it, South Korea was 100% dependent on imported Japanese sugar. By 1956, thanks to Chiel Sugar, South Korea's dependence fell to 7%. In 1954, Lee founded Chiel Textiles. With the success of his sugar and textile businesses, Lee became very wealthy. He maintained good relations with Ri Sing Man's administration, making it possible for him to win many supply contracts. Lee also ventured into finance by acquiring banks and insurance companies. In 1958, for example, he acquired Ankuk Fire and Marine Insurance. By 1960, Lee was considered the richest man in South Korea. In May 1961, the Korean army carried out a coup, overthrowing the government. Major General Park Chung-hee took power. At the time of the coup, Lee was in Japan. When he heard that a coup had occurred, he was hesitant to return to his home country. He feared that he would be persecuted for his business relations with the government. Fortunately for Lee, Major General Park was a strong believer in economic efficiency and industrialization. After a series of deliberations with the incoming military regime, Lee returned to South Korea. The regime assured him that it would support his business activities and even set forth a plan to industrialize South Korea, making it a global manufacturing powerhouse. As part of Park's plan, his regime would select a number of local companies and support them to compete and succeed against global companies including in the West. The government established the Federation of Korean Industries in August 1961, and Lee was called upon to head it. He took up the challenge. Lee also resumed his leadership role of Samsung. However, the government took control of his banking interests. In 1963, Lee established TBC TV and Radio. He also acquired Shing Sege Department Store. In 1967, he launched Sehan Paper Company. These early successes by Samsung in commodities manufacturing, trading and retailing were commendable. But Lee's greatest success would come from an industry he knew little about but had strong conviction in its potential, electronics. South Korea in the 1960s was not as technologically industrialized as its Asian peers. Park's administration wanted to change that, committing government support to businesses that could lead the country's tech revolution. In November 1968, Samsung signed a technology investment partnership agreement with Japan's Sanyo Electric. Soon afterward, in January 1969, Lee founded Samsung Electronics. He followed this up by entering into another technology partnership with NEC and Sumitomo Corporation, also in Japan. With technology partnerships in place in 1970, Lee recruited and sent 137 trainees to Japan to get training on how to produce radio condenser speakers, transformers, deflecting coils, brown tubes, and vacuum tubes from Sanyo and NEC. Afterward, they returned to Samsung Electronics to work as technical professionals. At the start, Samsung Electronics focused primarily on manufacturing household electronics. It had 45 employees in 1970. That year, in partnership with Sanyo, Samsung unveiled its first black and white televisions. By the close of 1970, it had generated sales of $250,000. In 1971, Samsung produced its first VCR. It sold these electronics locally and globally. By 1976, Samsung was producing color televisions. By 1978, Samsung had produced 2 million black and white TVs. By the end of the decade, it had become a global leader in the TV manufacturing, ranked third in the world behind Japan and the Netherlands. Aside from TVs and VCRs, Lee also ventured into new industries in the 1970s. In 1974, he incorporated Samsung Petrochemical, which concentrated on making chemicals. In 1977, he launched Samsung Shipbuilding. The two subsidiaries grew over the 1970s, making Samsung one of the largest shipbuilders and chemical manufacturers in the world. In 1978, Lee launched Samsung Semiconductor. In 1979, he won the World's Best Enterpriser Award. In the 1980s, Samsung Electronics reached new milestones with its core product. For example, in 1981, black and white TV production hit 10 million units. In 1984, production of color TVs hit 5 million. 
Samsung Electronics also expanded its product portfolio to include semiconductors, electric desk calculators, refrigerators, and air conditioners. Lee received an honorary doctorate in business economics from Boston University in 1982. Lee stayed as chairman of Samsung from its founding to 1987. Throughout his years of leadership, he emphasized the role of business in helping the state achieve its economic goals. He entrenched this in Samsung's first business philosophy in 1973, engaging in business for national service. Lee also believed in recruiting the best talent and putting them in a position to succeed. He once said that he spent 80% of his time recruiting and training people. He even allegedly sat in 100,000 interviews between 1957 and 1986. Once he had hired and trained people though, Lee gave them considerable autonomy, letting them work and make decisions on their own. He gave them goals, created a system to track productivity, and then let the workers do their work. He did not, however, like trade unions. Another philosophy Lee had was logical decision-making based on reality. He, for example, emphasized the need to make affordable, quality products to compete with those from more developed countries. He also promoted the introduction of foreign systems into Samsung Electronics to improve business management. His logical thinking also led him to champion cost-cutting and efficiency at Samsung. Lee was a prominent art collector and over his life assembled one of South Korea's largest art collections. His collections are open for public viewing at Ho Am Art Gallery. Lee established the Korea Samsung Scholarship in 1964 to give scholarships to Korean students. He then established the Samsung Culture Foundation in 1965 to advance programs that enhance morality and enriched Korean cultural life. He contributed 1 billion won and 330,000 square meters of land to the foundation. In 1971, he contributed another 6 billion won to the foundation. In 1966, Lee founded the Jun Ang Development and Cordio Hospital. Lee led Samsung as chairman until his death in 1987. He left the company to his youngest son, Lee Kun Hee. Lee Byung-chul was lucky to have a very good education at the start, which was not the norm for South Korea at the time. He used his inheritance to create Samsung and started to trade, which was good business there. His business flourished and he did not stop. He diversified and expanded and after some decades, Samsung became the largest company in South Korea. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.